So this last week rocked me. Of all months being September, being Life Insurance Awareness Month, a situation, a scenario very close to me came to my attention and I'm taking a different angle with this episode. I want to take you specifically with inside our business family and expose to you a story that might relate with you and your family. You're gonna meet a family that's gonna remind you a lot of people that you love and care about and give you an understanding and exposure to scenario of what happens when life does happen in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad. It's been said that most people treat their finances like they do technology. What am I talking about? Let me ask you a question. What cell phone did you grow up with? Was it Blackberry? Was it Nextel? So it's been said that people that were on Blackberry, it took them a long time to improve their, their, their technology to the iPhone or the Android. Yet the people that had Nextels right away, they adapted to the Android or iPhone right away. See, the same scenario happens with people with finances. Most people hold down to outdated, uh, dinosaur financial strategy and technology, whereas people that are on the cutting edge, they seek new information, they improve their situation, in this case scenario, save their financial life. What do you want to do when it comes to your finances? Because here's the thing, life insurance where does month being September? Most people think that life insurance only happens for when you die, right? But what happens when somebody suffers a heart attack, stroke, cancer? What happens to most people financially? What happens when they survive? How set back financially are they? See, most people file bankruptcy not because they're in a bad financial situation. Most people in America file bankruptcy because of healthcare and health changes to the scenario. So in this video, I want to share with you one thing that life insurance does that most people don't think that it does and why it's costing a lot of people a lot of money and unnecessary heartache. So please let me introduce you to our good friends, Dustin and Kenya Frampton. What's going on, guys? How you doing? Hey, man. Thanks for doing <laughs> this. Thank, you guys look good. We're in red. It's Friday, Red Friday. Yes. Right? You guys rocking mm -hmm. some logos, rocking some gear? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so talk to us. Talk to us about you. Let me get some background on your, on your uh, marriage. How did, you guys, how did you guys initially connect? We met at church, our home church, Christian Life Center in Tinley Park, Illinois. Dustin was actually uh, brought here through a, a student program. And I was already here doing stuff at church, very active at church, and it was a done deal. <laughs> so, so from where? Dustin coming mm -hmm. from where? Dustin came from Trinidad and Tobago, and um, I'm from Chicago. Woo woo! <laughs> <laughs> the church actually brought him here because of just his talent, everything that he does. He's a hard worker. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he also plays the keyboard. Nice. So he um, played at the church for a while yeah. before we started dating. Gotcha. And then, then we started dating. Gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> yeah. And then we got married, married at the church and everything. How many kids do yeah. you have? Today? We have four. Beautiful kids. Thank you. Thank right. you, Matt. Yes. Little things running with big, big hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of hair, a lot of hair <laughs> to do. So yeah. Dustin was introduced to me by Richard Love, my good friend from uh, the military. Yes. He was, he's the one who recruited me from, from the Marine Corps to serve in the Illinois National Guard for a couple years. Mm -hmm. But he introduced me to Dustin because Dustin did, did websites and graphic design. Mm -hmm. so, so the interesting thing about that is that Dustin started reading my stuff. He started listening to the videos and started putting together a website. And make a long story short, he reconnected with Richard Love says, hey, I, I think this is something that my wife and I need to pay attention to yeah. money and, and insurance. So, okay, so that being yeah. said, you got involved in the industry mm -hmm. and obviously eventually purchased a life insurance policy. Yeah. Why'd you buy life insurance? In our culture, yeah. Matt, when we're like going on promotion runs, we help each other out. Dustin needed a policy anyway. So that's, that's when he purchased a policy gotcha. to help a friend out with her promotion her marketing director promotion. So is it, is it something he needed anyway? Yep. And just helping a, an agent to uh, get to the next level in their career, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's something that you needed to do financially responsible anyway. Let's, yeah. let's fast forward. Okay. What happened June 12th? June 12th, um, in the morning, um, I woke up, but um, Dustin was still knocked out, like sleep. And I woke him up because I was getting ready to go. Kids were getting up, stuff like that. And he's like, he was still kind of out of it. But he tells me, he realizes he can't move his right hand. Okay. So he's like, I can't move my hand. Um, 
and I was like, are you sure? He's like, yeah, I can't move it. Maybe I slept on it. So I said, okay. And then he goes back to, to sleep, okay, you know. So then he still sleep. I'm like up and about. I had actually had to make a run to our office in Richmond Park. I'm calling while I'm in, at the office and the kids are like, yeah, daddy's still knocked out. Daddy's still knocked out. Where's the kids at? So the kids are there. I homeschool, so they were doing mm. their work there with daddy. So they're like, daddy is still, and I said, well, wake him up, wake him up. Like, why is he still knocked out? Usually he's up by, you know, up by then. They woke him up, so he's like, hello, hello, barely, really groggy, really. And I was like, Dustin, Dustin, I said, are you okay? Was I said, can you, so then I said, how's your hand? And he's like, I still can't move it. I feel it moving. Yeah, I still can't move it. Now, at that time I had an appointment so I'm like, I'm thinking in my mind, I need to hurry up and do this, as a, this, do this appointment and get back home. So while I'm waiting, so I hung up with Dustin and while I'm still waiting for the appointment, something tells me to call back. So I, to, you know, to see what else is going on. So I called back, the kids picked up daddy's phone and they're like, I said, what's daddy doing? They're like, he's still asleep, mommy. And then my son, uh, our son, the baby, he's like, mommy, oh yeah, daddy fell. And I said, wait a minute, I said, daddy fell? So I said, so daddy got up? Yeah, daddy got up uh, for a little bit to go to the restroom, but he just, he fell. I said, oh, did he fall over something? Did he trip? No, mommy, he just fell. So that kind of triggered a um, something in me. I need to hurry up and I need to what come back thought? home. What was your first thought? My first thought was, um, I was in denial, but I said, Some, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong, something's not right. I mean, he fell and didn't trip over anything. Mind you, we have kids, you know, so it's like, I'm like, okay, usually we have toys, <laughs> but he didn't fall over a toy. So I was like, okay. So I, anyway, fast forward, I tried to get through the appointment. I came straight home. So I rushed in and I said, where's daddy? Where's daddy? And the kids are like, he's in the bed. He's asleep, he's asleep. So I go in and I'm like, Dustin, Dustin, get up, get up. He couldn't hear me. He wasn't waking up right away. I was shaking him very hard. I said, Dustin, Dustin, he's still knocked out. So finally, this last time I was like, Dustin, Dustin, Dustin. So he's like, huh? And I was like, honey, get up, get up. And so right away I said, can you move your hand? He's still like, no. So something in me tells me, okay, Dustin, um, raise your legs, raise your legs. I start doing some tests raise your leg so he's like he raises his left leg but then he says I, I can't move my right leg now mind you the right leg is on the same side the hand that couldn't move earlier. yeah same side so I said okay and I, I'm I'm trying to stay calm because the kids are watching me mm -hmm. so I said okay so after he tells me I can't move my right leg he's about to go right back to sleep but something, but God tells me, don't let him go back to sleep. Wake him up, sit him up. So I got him up, I sat him up. I said, Dustin, you gotta sit up. You gotta sit up, honey, you gotta sit up. And, uh, sorry. So our second daughter, she was really strong. And she, uh, her name is Serenity, and she came and helped me hold him up. So when we set him up, he starts waking up. He starts waking up. So I said, okay, we're doing it. We're doing the right thing. But I knew what it was because it happened to my dad. So he started waking up and then he's like, mind you, in his mind, his whole body can still move. So he's trying to get back up, trying to, you know, be mobile. I said, honey, what are you doing? What are you doing? And he's like, well, but he's mumbling. I don't understand what he's saying. Finally, we were able to stand him up. 
and I'm like, okay, what do I do next? What do I do next? And um, so many, so many thoughts were running through my mind. Should I call 911? Should I uh, take him myself to the hospital? I didn't want to risk it taking him myself, so I just called 911. That's it, you know. So the ambulance came and got him and took him to the local hospital. And so they're like, he was still out of it. It was really, really hard for the kids to watch. I was by myself for a while until um, our marketing director, your friend, uh, Richard Love and his wife, Karen, they came. They came to see Dustin right before he was getting flown to Northwestern downtown. Before he got flown, the doctors were like, we gotta fly him to Northwestern because well, there's nothing we can do here. It, was like, it wasn't like a, a center that could... No, uh, no, not to his degree. Okay. It was very, they said what was going on with him was very severe. Hmm. And so I said, okay. So they said, they said um, we have to fly him to Northwestern. I said, okay, it was just crazy. So that I could think clearly though, Richard and Karen Love, they took our kids for like a week so that I could figure out what's going on with him. They were the, like the greatest support because my parents are both in wheelchairs, okay? His parents are in Trinidad. Yeah. That's why I say like nobody can say, I mean, PHB agency, we really are a family. That's all I gotta say. You know, if you're passionate about what you do, just work close together and stuff, so. Can you, when the doctor said he had a stroke, what's the first thoughts that went through you, your mind? I didn't understand why him. My husband works very hard. I didn't understand, I was like, he's 38. Because my dad had one, and he's uh, almost 60. So I'm like, I'm, I, I thought only old people get this. You know, I mean, I really thought that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what is going on here? I just, I just couldn't understand. I was like, why him? He's healthy, you know, like he doesn't consume. And it's crazy because every doctor that I came across kept asking me, does he smoke? Does he drink? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, no, he doesn't do anything. He goes to church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this this man loves God. You know, I'm like he doesn't he doesn't do anything, and so the doctors couldn't even understand why this happened to him. They just didn't get it. And to be honest with you, they're still trying to figure out why this happened to him. Yeah, they're still trying to run tests. Because they, they don't understand. Yeah. I don't understand. I'm still trying to understand. Yeah. You're trying so. to figure out what the triggering effects yes, were. Yes, yes. So in that moment, right, what were some other things that you're thinking about in that moment? Was it the kids? Was it the, the graphic design business? What was, was going through your mind? Everything. Yeah. <laughs> Everything. What am I going to do? Will he be able to come back from this? Okay. Because you don't know at the moment. You know, like all the doctors are coming to you saying, well, you know, usually, <laughs> you know, some people come back halfway, some people, it all depends, it all depends. I was just like, oh my goodness, <laughs> I don't want to hear that, you yeah. know? Like, I'm a woman of faith, so I'm like, no, I believe he's going to make a comeback. I'm just, I'm just believing. I don't want to hear nothing else. But, of course, in these, in these moments, mm -hmm. being human, mm -hmm. You're like, still, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna pay the bills? How am I gonna continue in this life? You were thinking about it at that moment? Yes, I was. Not I a day was. later, not a week later. You were thinking about it right then. Yeah, then. I was. Your life was, and your future was yes. flashing. Yes, yes, yes. Remember when you said earlier mm. that, you know, we wanted to help a friend get prom uh, promoted, you, that's why you buy a life insurance. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think, why do you think Dustin needed life insurance to begin with? Why, why do you think he, he needed it? Most people don't think they need it because they're not wealthy and they don't need life insurance. Why did you right. think you needed, if we were to go back, why do you think you needed life insurance? Because he's the sole provider. He's the one who, I mean, he's the, the head of the household, the leader. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like, why not? Yeah. You know, we kind of, it made me realize when this happened to him, how we all depend on him. Me, the kids, yeah. you know, 
and even with fully the, exposed yes fully exposed <laughs> fully exposed and even with the web design business oh my gosh matt all the clients what's going on i need this fix i need this up oh my gosh i had to learn something real quick <laughs> It's like, uh, uh, okay, hold on a second. I'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> people think that PHP is PHP coding, not PHP agency. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna assume that. Too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, talk to us about what happened earlier this week. Because you had life insurance, what happened earlier this week? Because most people think that you need to be wealthy. Yep. And what's another stereotype that most people think you, you buy life insurance for, just in case you die? Right. Yeah. So, what happened to you guys earlier this week? We got a payout earlier this week because of Dustin having that policy. And um, it was a nice amount. It was, it was a nice amount where we can be comfortable mm -hmm. and not be stressed out. When you're talking about the nice amount, what is this nice amount allowing you to do? It's allowing us to um, get a purchase a car that we don't have to worry about doing repairs every two weeks. <laughs> taking him to doctor's appointments, you know, comfortably, so he can be comfortable, the kids can be comfortable. It's allowing us to pay bills, get caught up on bills. It's allowing us to um, just, just, li just to live, get groceries. Mind you, we have four right. kids. Right. They all eat like, yeah. <laughs> they eat every, sure. yeah. every five seconds, yeah. you know? So that's what it's helping us do. It was crazy because while he was in therapy, he was still gone. He was mm -hmm. still not home yet. Mm -hmm. We were coming to, me and the kids were going to see him and my car stopped on me on the highway. On the highway. Just like that. Just like that. Just locked down on me. Right, I know. It's funny now, <laughs> but man, yes. So I said, okay, yep. So it was just the. It was it was time to. It was make, time. Yeah, I got you. Yes. Very good. <laughs> yes. So yes. so so talk to us about how it was, it was the, the car purchasing process. Was this car purchasing process much different now that you got some money uh, to buy the car versus how you purchased cars in the past? Yes. So it was a much different yes. car buying process this time around. Yes. <laughs> it was way different. It was way different. Let's just say we don't have to do a car note. That's what life insurance does. It allows you to make purchases where you don't have to do a monthly payment. And I gather you got the best price because you walked in like boss. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I mean, it was just, it was just amazing. It was just amazing, yeah. It felt good being in a power position for once? Yes, yeah. felt very good. Not and reactive? My, yes, yeah. and my husband felt very good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, Dustin, I'm, 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 number one, I'm glad you took financial responsibility for your family. It just wasn't because of their promotion. It just wasn't because of helping somebody out. Ultimately, the primary is because you're helping yourself out. So, so in other words, you, you have a style of life insurance that nobody had to die for you to get a benefit from. So, the, not, not, now that you guys are in the insurance industry, now you guys are doing this for, for a career in the business, as well as the, the graphic design, how many people do you run into that don't realize what life insurance actually does because they're comparing it to what they see on TV or, you know, the you know the they get it because it's a bundle patch and you get a discount on their car insurance. How many people do you run into that they have such a misunderstanding of life insurance for what it could do? Everyone. Everyone. Kenya, how would how would you have paid the bills? How would you have bought the groceries? How would you help the kids out if Dustin didn't have life insurance? I mean, picture your life right now. You don't have this. You don't have this claim from insurance company paid to you how would you how, how would you guys be surviving right now i honestly don't know i honestly don't know like the thought is scary the thought is scary you know because you don't want to be a burden to your family i i'm the oldest out of three and my siblings they have their own families their own you know i don't know what i would have done because we already have a tribe, you know? <laughs> it's like, and I had the thought, I'm not gonna lie, uh, Matt, I had the thought, um, you know, if this didn't, if he didn't have it, it's like, who would take in a family? You know, who would take in a family? And it's like, you know, 
you don't want to feel like you're not being responsible, you know? Like I'm 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 39. Mm-hmm. You know, like is at that age and this is this could be anybody. You're too old to be trying to figure out life, mm-hmm. trying to fi- trying to restart. You know what I'm saying? Trying to just you know, ask people. I can see if I was 18. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> not in your 30s. Right, yeah. not, not in my 30s. No, not in our 30s. You, you see a lot of clients. You, you educate them on this stuff all the time too as well. You were, you're seeing appointments the day that, day that happened. Mm-hmm. How many people do you run across that are so uneducated about what life insurance does? Many. Many are ignorant about how life insurance works. Many. Many think that it's just when you die but you can use it while you're living. It's all about life. It's called life insurance, you know? You're still I'm, homeschooling your kids, you're still I'm taking still care homes- of them. Yes, I'm still homeschooling the kids. The kids don't know the details about the policy, but they can tell that, <laughs> they can tell that um, mommy and daddy are okay, so they're okay. <laughs> Cause kids are smart, you know? They're very smart, very watchful, very, you know, they're like paying attention. And they saw the stress when this first happened. They felt the stress. But now they just know, like they're relieved about something. They know, they're relieved. They're like, daddy and mommy are okay. Okay, we're okay. We're okay. Cause kids know. Kids know. Love it. Love it. Yeah. When you see people unprepared and they put up GoFundMe pages up, which is not supposed to be used for life insurance, it's supposed to be to go fund my business, go fund my invention, go fund my book, go fund my song, go fund my album. It's supposed to be go fund my emergencies. Correct. How do you feel about that? What would you say to somebody right now thinking that to prepare for life's emergencies is using GoFundMe? What would you say to them? It is not anyone else's responsibility to take care of your life needs. GoFundMe takes a percentage out too, you know? As well as the credit cards. Yes, they take their cut. They take their cut. So that compared to the life insurance policy. <laughs> Which cut do you want to give? Right. You know, like this. And which has right. got the smaller cut. Yes. Right? Yes. And what yes. you got in the cut that you give out, how much more would you get? Right. You know, right. Right. Way more. Way more. And I feel like just like I just made a post on Facebook. You're doing go for me. You're low balling yourself. You're low balling yourself. It's, it's all in the mindset. It's all in the mindset. If we get educated about how life insurance works, you will know how big the effect is of how helpful life insurance is. When you say lowballing them, what do you mean by that? With a GoFundMe, it's no comparison to what a, poly, what a claim can do. No comparison. And I think that because of the education part that's missing mm-hmm. within our culture. Yep. People just don't know. Like people, people, don't, people don't believe. They don't believe the help that they can get with, through that. Yeah. You know, they have no idea. And GoFundMe is just not it. That's just, it's just not it. And you, you think this adds yeah. to your story when you talk to people and educate people about life insurance, building your own insurance agency, building your own careers in it, you think that comes through? in your conversation across the kitchen table? Yes, definitely, definitely. And it comes across a different way now because of the experience. That a little bit or a lot had. of it? A lot of it, a lot of it. I don't believe in life insurance, <laughs> Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> How about, let me show you this though. <laughs> what would you say right now, before I close out, Kenya, what would you say to somebody right now, a mom that's out there, wife, single mom, kids, Grandparents, what would you say right now in terms of what the power of what life insurance does? What would you, what would you, how would you encourage them? Life insurance is for now and it's for later. And it's just, it's good to have, period. It's just good to have, period. You just gotta have it. 
it's it's more important than having um, insurance on your phone. It's more important than having insurance on your car. It's way more important because guess what? With that life insurance, you can get another phone. With that life insurance, you can get another car. <laughs> so I'm just saying, I'm just saying, it's way, way more important. Interesting point you made there. Yes. Interesting point. People yes. get offered insurance for the cell phone and their DVD player, mm -hmm. and they take advantage of it. Yes. And yet they can, for the same dollar amount, they can get a, a, a proper policy. Yes. Is life insurance expensive, Kenya? Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. I mean, if you're, whatever you're looking for, you can have it. You can have it. There's so many options out there. That's what people need to know. There's a lot of options. Check out, check out your options. It's so important just to look into your options. Mm -hmm. It's not just this cookie cutter. Life insurance is not a cookie, cut, cookie cutter thing. It's not. You can get whatever you're looking for to cater for your need and for your family. Yes. I love it. So. Awesome. Yes. That being said, I want to know your thoughts. What has life insurance or lack of life insurance meant to you? Have you ever thought about life insurance this way? Have you ever thought about the benefits of living benefits versus just a death benefit? Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your feedback, whether you're in the industry or just somebody just stumbling across this video. What has this episode meant to you? That being said, if you haven't done so, make sure you click subscribe and uh, follow the Seven Figure Squad as we journey to 10,000 subscribers. And if you, uh, uh, if you know somebody who's going through a situation like this, please comment below and share this video with them. With that being said, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching the episode. I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.